Hey, this is Minister Tracy with Gospel Access, and guess what? Getting ready to talk to legendary percussionist, Ms. Sheila E. Stay tuned. guys, I'm here with the legend herself, producer, author, actress, but she's best known as the queen of percussion, Miss Sheila E. Hey, Sheila. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for just spending a few minutes, carving out a few minutes of your day to spend with us. We are just so excited to speak. And you're one of my personal favorites, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk about your new album, which I have. Let me say that. Wow. Mm-hmm. You want to know what my favorite song is? Sure. Possibilities. Oh, there you go. Yes. That's my fave. That's my fave. I really, really like the message. But tell us all about this new project. Uh, this record was, uh, was thought of many, many years ago, at least five to seven years ago, but it took almost two years to complete. Uh, it's not easy to do a genre of music that you grew up listening to, but not officially recording an entire album. Uh, the music is, is challenging, it's, but it's passionate, it's emotional. Uh, it's about culture, uh, the people. And my dad, the legendary Pete Escobedo, is a Latin jazz artist, so I grew up as a Latin jazz artist. However, salsa music is its own entity and is completely different than Latin jazz. So it took a minute and even finding the right producer to produce this with me, Tony Sukar, uh, ended up recording it, most of it in Miami and then here at my home. Uh, but, you know, to get these legends on this record um, and pay homage to three artists and then the, uh, and doing three covers and then, uh, you know, writing the other seven songs, um, it it was uh, it was a journey, absolutely a journey, and um, it's been on my bucket list for a long time, and uh, finally was able to make that happen, and and by the grace of God, for real, it was it was very challenging, and and especially one of the things is I don't speak Spanish, I don't understand Spanish, I can sing a little bit of Spanish. Uh, but we weren't brought up in that culture. However, the music itself is all in my heart. I play from my heart. God has given me this gift of rhythm of music. And to be able to, at this time, even in my life, going to be 67 in a couple of months, I'm still so excited about doing new music and creating. And God just keeps throwing nuggets here and there. And you just go, wait, wait, what? <laughs> You know, I can do this salsa record, and my first ever salsa record is called Bailar, which means dance. And um, we have amazing guest artists, Ruben Blades, uh, Victor Manuel, uh, Renato, I mean, uh, Roberto Santa Rosa, um, Luis Enrique, Gloria Stefan, Mimi, Estef Mimi uh, Sukar, uh, Tony Sukar, of course, my dad, Pete Escobedo, my mom, Juanita, uh, El Canario, Jean Rodriguez, a lot of like wonderful guests. And that's not even including all the amazing musicians that uh, recorded on this record from Miami. And the purpose was to use uh, different cultures of people uh, in this record and mixing my Oakland roots, Bay Area mix of a little bit R&B into the salsa. Wow. You know, what you've done is just amazing. You stepped out there and you're doing something that you've never, you've never done before. So talk to us about the importance of getting out. To, this was out of your comfort zone, I'm sure, even though it was kind of in your wheelhouse, but still talk to us about the importance of stepping out of your comfort zone to do something different that you feel God has told you to do. Well, that's the thing is like, you know, we sometimes put ourselves in a box and thinks, and we sometimes think, well, okay, we have to stay within this box. But, you know, um, there's so many gifts that we don't get in touch with 
that God has for us. And, you know, how do you reach out and, and, and let those things happen? Well, listening to God and, and not being afraid and not living in fear, you know, living in, I love change. I love that things happen spontaneously. And at the right time, you know, a lot of times I'm going, that's only God because God has perfect timing. And he, he gave me the gift of time and rhythm and, and uh, stepping out on faith really is just, is the key. I'm not a, I'm, I'm nervous. I get nervous. Uh, I don't live in fear. I get afraid sometimes because it, it's not my, my comfort zone, but I love stepping out of that. I think outside the box. And every time I do something different, it's like, what else can I do that I've never done or, or, um, you know, not being afraid to do so. And that's kind of been my life for a very, very, very long time. Well, you stepping outside of the box and you being faithful to what God has put in your heart, your gifts, and what he's called you to do has caused you to be successful. There's a scripture in Psalms that says, whatever he doeth shall prosper. And I don't, I, I've, I've even seen you in concert and you're just spirit of excellence, just all over the place, really. <laughs> so you. you are legendary and you work with legends. And just last year, you got, I think, your star on the Walk of Fame, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Now, come on now. You didn't see that. And I'm going to tell you, whenever you obey God, he's got stuff in your future that you don't, you don't know and you won't know until you start walking in the path that he laid out. No, absolutely. That was that was not like I have an extensive, uh, you know, list, a bucket list and things that I like to do, goals, accomplishments. Um, what can I do better? All of that. And I think it's really for once. I mean, for sure, I think it's important to write things down and, and make that list so that you can look at it and remind yourself, wait, I was focused on doing this. But, you know, actually, this brought me to this place. Now I can check this off. Um, but you never know what's going to happen. And that just came out of nowhere. Um, and what an amazing, uh, you know, surprise, uh, especially when I first moved to L.A. from Oakland. My friend and I said, let's let's go to to uh, L.A. And uh, we put everything in this big U-Haul truck and drove to Los Angeles. And it just so happened that uh, I was working the day that I got there because I was already on tour with George Duke. But where I got my star is probably 10 blocks from where I first moved to LA. And, and I just go, man, that's crazy. Like right there, you know, I came to LA to pursue my career and hoping in hopes of expanding and, you know, being able to play with people that I love and great music. And it's just crazy because again, I didn't say it in my list of wonderful things, oh, I'd like to get a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That was not on my list. Well, God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you, all that we ask for things. So absolutely, it doesn't surprise me at all. But you know what, Sheila, with your level of success, I know that you've had adversity, you've had setbacks, you've had hurdles, you've had some stumbles along the way. So, what? Uh, give us some. Give us. Some advice on when you're pursuing and you're chasing your dream but you got some adversity what's the best way to handle it well god is the only way for for one thing i it, you know i i can't do anything without him and when there are times when i'm down i mean i i'm one that's always constantly promoting get up come on let's do this you know the, uh, positive encouraging people mentoring young people all the time and I don't always feel that way, but I keep saying it's like, you know, God's got me. He's 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 never left me, uh, and and with Him by my side, and I'm I'm constantly praying, constantly praying before the shows and getting through things, and you know, trying not to stress about things. You know, what we always try to say, too blessed to be stressed, but the human part of us is is natural for us to feel some kind of way sometimes, and. You know, there's times where I just go, God, you know, just help me. I don't know what else to do or tell me what I need to do or, you know, send me a message or something, you know. And sometimes you don't hear from him and it doesn't mean that he's not listening. It just means, OK, let's figure this out, you know, but I can't worry about this. Like, God, here you have it. I'm done. 
whatever you want me to do, let's go because I'm not even going to carry all this. I can't do it. It's yeah. So and once I started doing that and getting through things, it, it, you know, there's stuff being thrown at me all the time, even as of a couple of days ago. It's every day. And I'm not the only one. Every single person in this world is going through something. Everyone is. And if we were just able to, you know, uh, a lot of, and I tell this to people in my shows, it's like, you know, I know a lot of people don't believe in God and that's okay. There's no condemnation here. You know, you're here because you love music. And for us, you know, loving music is a part of our gift. God has given us the gift of music. And so you're here because you love music. And it's pretty awesome that the love of music and this and music itself is one entity that brings all people together, whether you believe in God or not, what your political views are, what your financial status is. People come together because they love music and it's really an awesome thing. But you have to know that that gift is from God. This is this is not something that I just started learning. He gave us, uh, my entire band, this gift of music. And I tell them, it's like, uh, the other thing that's really important is sharing how so many people have not heard someone say to them in a very long time that you are loved, you are more than enough. And we tell them at this point in the show, this is very important. We want you to, everyone stands up in the entire building, whether it be 5,000 people or 20,000 people. I have everyone stand up and I say in your section, the person you, or the people you did not come with, look at a stranger, turn around and tell them, I love you. Because you never know saying I love you to someone might save someone's life. And that's all it is, is just, we're here just to spread love. And, and then at the end, it, and I say like love changes the atmosphere. Love can change our country. Love can change the world. If we love each other unconditionally, hate cannot exist in that same atmosphere. That being said, after everyone talks and hugs people, the stories that I hear that happens because of that is amazing. And people send me stories and it's like, oh my God, new relationships and saving lives. And it's really important. And then I tell people like, you know, I just want to let you know, you know, if you've never been to church, you know, it's fine, but I just want to let you know, you just went to church. Cause really this is what it's about loving each other. And they, they get a big kick and a laugh out of that, but that's important. And that's how you get out of things, encouraging them, blessing people. That That's the only job I've ever had is to bless one person every single day. You are so awesome. You know, you you really are. And you. Uh, you wrote an autobiography, The Beat of My Own Drum, I believe is the name of it. And one question I have for you is you're in your own lane. You're owning your lane, which is beautiful. That's why you're successful. Now that I'm talking to you, I see why you've been following, you've been following God. But um, have you ever wanted to like compare yourself to somebody else? Because when we do that, you know, we shouldn't do that. But have you ever said, eh, this drumming thing, I don't know if it's going to work. Maybe I should go over here and do what she, you know, Stacy's doing or Tracy's doing. Have you ever had that? You know, like, oh yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. I mean, there's times where you, you try not to again, but excuse me, you compare yourself to other people. And like I said, the human part of us is just a normal thing to do. And then I go, but yeah, I can't compare me to anyone because when I first signed as um, uh, uh, to a Warner Brothers, I signed as an R&B artist and I was struggling with them to understand that Glamorous Life needed to be the first single and they wanted something else. And they're like, no, it should be this. This is the single. I said, no, why I'm telling you is this because Glamorous Life was written so that I could play percussion and there's not very many, if any, women playing percussion and leading their own band and singing and dancing at the same time, a triple threat. And I, and they're like, well, we're, we're not going to agree with you because it needs to be this other single. I then say to them, listen, I'll show you what it looks like. We need to just do a showcase at Warner Brothers in Burbank. So we did, but they said, but before we do this, tell us who we, you can compare yourself to so that we can look at that. This is 1984. Who can we compare you with? And I said, Nobody. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, girl, you got me getting ready to run around this studio. <laughs> Come on here. Yeah. 
Awesome, 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 awesome. What's one piece of advice uh, that really shaped your career? One Shape? piece of advice. Yeah, you know, like one piece of advice that somebody gave you. It's like, man, I'm still holding true to that piece of advice this day, whether it be from your mom or your dad or George Duke or Prince or, or someone. I mean, it's always been my dad, my parents, the, the both of them together. They, my dad is always, it's not even a piece of advice, but it's a, a lifestyle that to, you know, treat others as you would want to be treated, be on time. That what that means 15 minutes before that time, if you're not there, you're late, um, you know, be prepared. The biggest thing was being prepared for your situation. So if he, uh, if I was going to do a session or uh, play a performance, making sure that I learn the music and that I'm prepared and I'm ready to go into that situation with all of the knowledge that I have that I could have gotten for that situation. And when you walk in knowing that you've done your homework, you walk in with confidence. And that's the biggest thing. If I didn't do the homework and I'm walking in a situation with all of these professionals and I'm walking in with no knowledge of what I'm supposed to do and everyone else has done their homework, I then will feel insecure. And that's the worst feeling in the world. I don't want to feel insecure. I want to be strong and and uh, encourage others to help them even. And my mom and dad have both said the same thing. It's like, you know, you have to be prepared. That's one of the biggest things, be on time and treat pe people well. Well, Sheila, thank you so much. I just want to just say that you're awesome. And I pray that God continue to fill you with the knowledge of his will for your life. And I pray that you continue to acknowledge him in all of your ways and that you continue to experience him directing your path. Oh, absolutely. God gets all the glory and, and uh, yeah, I can't live my life without him. So I'm just thankful and grateful. And thank you for allowing me to be on this platform with you. Thank you so much, my dear. You're welcome.